Good day 2P and welcome to our first lesson for nonlinear relationships. Our goal today, I can recognize a linear relationship when it is represented by a set of ordered pairs that I can graph. So first, we're talking about exploring non-linear relationships. Um, we have to remember what a linear relationship was. So we already talked about linear relationships. Linear relationships can be represented by a set of ordered pairs that will form a straight line when graphed. So just as a quick recap on how to graph a pair of ordered pairs, um, I'm going to take this uh, set of ordered pairs and I'm going to plot them on this grid. So negative 6, 10 means I go to negative 6 on the x-axis. 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, so 6 backwards. And then I have to go 10 up. And this grid goes from negative 10 to positive 10. So that's where I need it, right there on that point there. And then negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 to 7 is right there. And negative 2 and 4, negative 2 and 4 is right there and 0 and 1 is there, 2 and negative 2 is there, 4 and negative 5 is there, and 6 and negative 8 will be right there. And so there I have my nice uh, graph and it's forming this nice straight line. Which I'll put that straight line on the grid there goes through all of the points and so that is a linear relationship. Now remember when we did linear relationships we found out things like slope and what we found out about slope was that if I take what the y's go up or in this case down by and I take what the x's go up or down by in this case uh, the y's go down by negative by 3 and the x's go up by 2 I can find what's called the slope which tells me um, how it's slanted. And remember, it's the change in y, so what the y's go up by, divided by the change in x, which is what the x's go up by. So that's negative 3 over 2. And if you take a look at that on here, from one point to the next, I have to go down 3. There's where that negative 3 rise came from, where the change in the y's means I go down 3, and then forward 2. And we also found out that um, they had a very specific point in the y-intercept, so I could actually find the equation of this graph. Remember we had y equals mx plus b, where m was the slope and b was where it crossed the y-axis. So in this case our slope was negative 3 over 2x, and our b is positive 1 because it crossed here at the 1 mark on the y-axis. Okay, so that's a quick recap of all of our um, graphs of linear functions. So we're going to go on to nonlinear functions. So hopefully it makes sense to you that a nonlinear relation doesn't form a straight line and the concept of a slope uh, doesn't make any sense. So let's have a look at this. This is a nonlinear relation. I'm going to graph it. Negative 6, 16, I can't actually put on here because I don't go to 16 up here in the y's, but I can put on the negative 4, 9. So here's negative 4 and the 9 will be right here. And the negative 2, 4 I can put on. And the 0, 1 I can put on. And then the 2 and 0 I can put on. Um, and then the 4 and 1 I can put on. And notice it does definitely doesn't follow a straight line, but we could probably find a pattern. If you notice this went 9, 4, 1, 0, 1, 4, probably the next one is going to be a 9 when this uh, pattern over here is followed, which would be 8. So probably if I went to, or sorry, not Oh, I didn't put on the 6, 4. There we go. 6, 4 was right here. And then the next one is likely to be uh, 8 and then 9 again up here. And so if you take a look at that, it's definitely not a line, but we can maybe join in the points with a nice smooth curve. Now this is kind of hard to do on my little screen here, but I'll do the best I can. Try to put a nice smooth curve through it 
and there we have a nonlinear relation. Now slope doesn't make much sense, although we can see that when we move from one dot to another, um, this rows not so quickly, this rows much more quickly, and that next one rows much more quickly as well. Okay, so you can see that, that the way it changes from one dot to another um, steadily increases, or if we look on the other side, it's going to decrease, because this, when I move from one dot to another, that's a pretty big jump, and then this, not quite so big, and then this one is even smaller. So you can see that from when we move from one point to another, the jumps are changing, the way we jump is changing. So let's have a look at um, if I can make a t-chart for, for kind of an example. Uh, and then graph it to see if it's linear or nonlinear. So making a t-chart for a problem question. The base and height of a triangle have a sum of 12. Make a table of values and graph this relation to compare the base length with the area of the triangle. Now we do need to remember that to find the area of the triangle we take the base, multiply it by the height, and divide it by 2. So over here we know that they have to add up to 12. So I'm going to start with, this is actually, I'm going to start with an impossible situation. I'm going to start if the base is 0, and I know the base and the height have to add to 12, then this has to be 12. But the area is going to be 0, because if I multiply the base times the height, I get 0, and then divide it by 2, I still get 0. So then I'll try the next one. The base is 1. The height in this case is going to have to be 11 because these two numbers here, we're told, have a sum of 12. So they have to add up to 12. And so the area is going to be the base times the height divided by 2. And in this case, that's going to be base times height is 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. Next, what if the base is 2? Well, if the base is 2, then the height has to be 10, because again, those two numbers have to, multi have to add to 12. It told us that up here. So 2 times 10 is 20, and then I have to divide that by 2, which is 10. And I'm doing all that because of this formula. It says I have to take the base times the height and then divide it by 2. Uh, so how about 3? If I take a base of 3, um, the height is going to be 9. Hopefully you're finding a pattern here. And then 3 times 9 is 27, divided by 2 is 13.5. So this is going up by 1's. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 11, and 12. And this side is going down by 1, so that's 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So 4 times 8 is 32, divided by 2 is 16. Uh, 5 times 7 is 35, divided by 2 is 17. And then 6 times 6 divided by, is 36, divided by 2 is 18. And then look up here, we're going back the opposite direction, because here I've got 5 times 7 and here I've got 7 times 5. That's not going to make a difference, so this is going to go back down again. 17.5, uh, 16, 13.5, 10, 5.5 and right back down to 0. So here we're going to graph the base length along the x-axis and the area along the y-axis. Well, the base length, oh, and that doesn't look like it's done very well. Um, hold on a second, got to fix that. You'll have to fix it on yours too. So I'm going to pause this. Okay, my scale was off a little bit. I had three spaces here that said a 2 on it instead of two spaces that said a 2. Um, so notice what I've got for a scale. I've got every two spaces. Um, I've put a number, but each space represents 1. So I go 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Uh, now I did that so I could get all 12 of them on here. And I need to get up to, well, I needed to get up to 18. So I didn't need to make this quite as big as I had. 
um, but we'll make do with what we've got here. So I start with a base of 0 and a height of 0. So I'm going to put that on the grid at 0, 0. And then for a base of 1, my height is 5.5. So that's going, or my area is 5.5. So that's going to be right here. Now for 2, my area is 10. So at 2, I need to go up to 10. At 3, my area is 13.5. So at 3 here, I need to go to uh, 13.5. So this is 14, so right about there. Uh, at 4, I need to go to 16, so 4 and 16. Um, 5 needs to be 17.5, so it's going to be right about here. And 6 needs to go to 18, so 6 and 18 is right here. And then we go back down the other direction, so I'm just going to use the symmetry of this thing to graph on the other points right there because they're all going to have a symmetric thing as these numbers come right back down to 0 at 12. And again that looks like a pretty neat curve there. Uh, it's definitely not a line uh, and so you need to try and draw a nice smooth curve. Oh, this is going to be way off. It's hard to draw on this computer little tablet that I'm using here. So uh, I'm just going to try and shift it a little bit so it meets it. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Uh, hopefully you can do better on your paper than I did here. Anyway, that's a nice smooth curve there, and you have a bunch of questions to do. Uh, first, you have an investigation, which is on the next page of your handout here. Um, it's also on a page in your textbook, but I want you to follow through that investigation, and then you have some questions to do. And so that's it for right now.